In our last video, we installed the directory plugin and made an entry, and I showed you a little bit about how that works. In this one, we're going to look what happened to that entry after we submitted it and some things that we can do with it. If we go to Forms, Entries, you'll see it right here. There's my entry. If we want to see it listed on the front end, we go to the directory page that was created by the add-on. And here you can see it. And these other two that came with it have a longer description. And so there's a read more link. This one doesn't have the read more link, but there is still more information. If you click the title of the business, it'll go to a new page listing all kinds of information about it. You can leave a review because we're logged in. We can edit the listing. Here's the address, phone number, uh, the links that we put in, reviews. Here's how you can leave a review. Here are those photos that I connected. Those are from WordCamp Europe and Germany. And here's a, a map. It should put a pinpoint where the city is, but I fudged a little on the address. So it's not a real address. Uh, and then there's a contact form. Now people can use this contact form to directly contact the business without having to go through the site owner. But now let's go back to this page and look at a few things that we can do here. You can view information about this entry, including all the things in the entry, without editing it. So this is just a view. And it tells us when it was created, how much was paid, the status of the transaction, how much it is. We can cancel it from here. And we can delete the entry, print, print it, et cetera, et cetera. And then we can view all the information. We can also add notes about this. So if there's something going on, uh, you want to leave, leave notes for the next person who looks at this, then you can. Um, here's some more information about the transaction, and we'll talk about that some more in just a few minutes. But if we go back and choose instead to edit, it's very similar to view, except you can edit all the fields. So you can change the image. You can You can change everything about this. Now, right here is something very interesting I want to show you. If we go back to our directory page, look at the URL. It's slash directory slash listing slash I-L-Y-G-Y, which doesn't make much sense. But if we bring up apples, it says apple dir. Well, right here is that I-L-Y-G-Y. So we can make it say anything we want. So I'm going to say Ophers dash busyness. Next. Actually, we don't want next. That just takes us through the form. We want to come up here and click save. That way you don't have to go through the whole form. Now let's go back here and reload this page. And now in the bottom, you can see it says Topher's business. I'll click through and you'll see it in the URL also. It's right here, it says Topher's Business. So that's a good way to clean up how these look. Uh, Google will like these much better with, with good sane names. Uh, so I recommend cleaning those up. Uh, now I wanna talk a little bit about the transaction that was made when this was submitted. With Stripe, when you make a transaction, your web server talks to Stripe, but then Stripe has to talk to your web server to say, hey, this went through, it's all good. Well, I'm working on a local development machine here, which means it's sitting behind my little Comcast firewall in my basement, and Stripe can't get a hold of my machine. So in my case, I had to cheat a little and go into the database and mark it complete. It would have worked fine if I'd been on a real web server. So if you're, if you're using this out on the web somewhere, this is not something you need to be concerned about at all. But if you're a developer working on a local environment, now you know that this is a thing that can happen and what to do about it. So now we have looked at the entry, uh, both view and edit. We've looked at it on the front end, but now let's look at what makes it look this way. Why does it have things ordered this way? And those are under views. So right here we have business reviews and paid listings. Now, Business reviews are when someone 
uh, a customer or something fills out the little review form on the page. We don't want that one. This is the paid listings. This is what makes a listing look the way it does. So we're going to go to edit. And this view is just called paid listings. That doesn't really matter what you call it. It can be anything. And it uses entries from, and these are all the forms that I've that I've made. So we're, we're doing business directory. And then view format. You can choose all entries, uh, a single entry, both, where the entries will link to a single entry page, which is what we have. And then actually a calendar, so you can click on a calendar. To view them that doesn't really fit our genre but it could another type of data so here's our listing page so this is the front end this is going to be one of these so before content we put in the form letter filter and then account of the listings and you can see that Here, there's the letters and there's the listings. Then this is for a single row. It says uh, it uses Flexbox and then it has these little tags for the logo and image, all that stuff. These little tags, you don't have to memorize them, they're all right here. So just to show you, I'm going to go down here and I'll click uh, Twitter. There. That's going to render Twitter. Um, let's go to logo there. So it says if Dura logo, then Dura logo. Now this one is for our specific logo. So you can use those or you can use anything from this list. Now what's really interesting is down here are some custom fields. And then advanced settings, what to do if there are no entries. And then right here is a filter entries. And this is really important. When I first filled this out, my entry did not appear. And I had to think for a little while why. And it was because of that Stripe incident. It says when payment status is equal to complete. Stripe was not able to talk to my web or talk to my local install and say this is complete. And so it was never completed. That prevented it from rendering. So with this filter, you can do all kinds of things. For instance, you could put in a hidden field with one value, and unless that value gets changed to something else, it won't render. That allows you to moderate. Because right now, if somebody fills out the form, pays their money, it magically appears on the site. That's it. If somebody really wanted to be naughty, they could pay their $100 and put porn on your site. If you put in an extra hidden field with one value and require it to be a different value before it goes on the front, then in order for one of these to get to the front of your site, you would have to come in and edit it, change that field and save, and then it would appear. Now that can be a little arduous, but it helps fight spam. So this page is for, as I mentioned, each one of these. Now we can go to detail page, and this is for this whole page under the link right here. So we have logo, title, reviews, a link, a description, etc. And over here, you can see we have the logo, the title, reviews a button, et cetera. So again, this is just like uh, the other one. It's a mix of plain old HTML and some uh, unique formidable tags. So that's how you edit custom fields. And this has the same filter. So people couldn't, even though it, it didn't appear on the front, right here, people wouldn't be able to guess uh, it, unless it were paid. So uh, that's, how, that's how views work and how they control what shows up here on the front of the entry once it is submitted.
So there's a brief overview of the directory add-on. There's more that it can do. You can choose two other different types of directories. We haven't gone through those. Uh, there's excellent documentation. I hope that what I've done here will help you understand the rest of what this directory add-on for formidable forms can do.